Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Hi, Mike Kapler here again for the Growing in Grace podcast, another week of focusing on God's grace. And with me, of course, the man who has so much grace that he thinks manual labor is the president of Mexico, Joel Brzezinski, the Breeze Man. Word up. Yes. <laughs> it's the cold <laughs> word. That's right. And everything else that you just said is not true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything else. President of Mexico. You know, they're... There was a guy, oh man, now, never mind, I lost it, what I was going to say. Well, there oh, was great. some guy, it, for whatever, whatever reason, that reminded me of some guy that was, uh, he he had a ministry called Growing in Grace, and he was telling people that he was Jesus. Had re, you know, Jesus had returned, and it was him. <laughs> so mm. I just, don't, don't. If you, you know, our listener, don't mix up us with that ministry. <laughs> <laughs> Growing in grace, it's a different, totally different ministry. And yeah, like a couple of clue, a couple of clues there are dot org <laughs> and Mike and Joel. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like when you look up the podcast, there are several podcasts called Growing in Grace, and you find the one with. Like you say, growingingrace.org and with Mike and Joel. And you've got us and not the guy who says he's Jesus, reincarnated or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that that wouldn't be us. Um, hey, you sent me something this morning. Let me, let me slip this in. Uh, somebody wrote to us and said, my wife and I are missionaries in northern Thailand, and we listen to your podcast every morning. Uh, what a breath of fresh air, exclamation point. I cannot believe how many Christians have been born again but raised wrong. Uh, the girls that we rescue from human trafficking and other horrible situations listen to your podcast as well, and they love the teaching as it backs up what we teach them. Anyway, keep up the great work. You're making a huge difference even here in Thailand. So yeah. thank you for that. We appreciate those kinds of words, right? Most definitely. That was that warmed our hearts for sure. Um, just knowing, because uh, when we do this, we never know who it's going to reach, uh, not only missionaries, but uh, the people that they have rescued. Um, and that's just that's just wonderful. It's just wonderful for us to hear that. It really is, because, uh, you know, you, you kind of know in your hearts that uh, stuff like that could be going on, but to, to actually hear it, um, it it's just... Uh, it, it, it's a fulfillment for us, I guess, in, in our hearts. So thanks for that. Um, speaking of words... Word. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, I'd like to have a word with you. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Yeah, hey, come over here. Can I have a word with you? And they go over to the corner, and one guy says uh, grass, and the other guy says sky. <laughs> well, and those are go words. Back to work or whatever. <laughs> That's never happened to me. Usually, if someone says they want a word with me, it's a lot of words. <laughs> exactly. And so when we say word, um, it doesn't necessarily mean just one word. But what I want to do here, Joel, is is get into something here. I don't know if this will take a few programs. I don't want to, I don't want to beat it into the ground. But um, James said something back in chapter one, uh, and it goes like this: Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Uh, and then he goes on from there, and we'll get back into that. I'm I'm just introducing this here a little bit. So let's stop and ask ourselves a question, because I have a feeling that most of us, this is just one of those things that we skip over. So I'm just going to ask this question, we're going to pose it, and we'll come back to it, but this is kind of the theme here for a little while. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Question, what did James mean by that? More specifically, what did he mean by the word, word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna get that's gonna get old probably. Do you mind if I just say word, 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 word? <laughs> um, so, what did he mean by the word? I mean, he's writing to people believed to be the earliest writing in the New Testament by most historians. Um, could have been. Let's just use round figures here, give or take a few years. 
about 10 years after the resurrection of Jesus, perhaps, or 10 years after the death or resurrection of Jesus. Um, so stop and think about that for a minute, because I think a lot of times, because we sort of casually just read through the verses and the chapters, you know, to, to make sure we're getting in our the quantity that we think we're supposed to get in. <laughs> um, I think it's one of those things that a lot of people probably just think he meant the Bible, which in the form that we know it in did, did not exist. Like I said, this was an early writing in the, in the New Testament. So he's writing to Jewish people, uh, believers in Christ uh, from the 12 tribes, and he's telling them, be doers of the word. So we'll come back to that. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to point something out, Joel, that I I barely touched on in my book, Clash of the Covenants. I, I just kind of skimmed by it because I didn't want to get into the weeds on it. I don't want to do that here. I just want to make a point. But the Ten Commandments, really, in, in the Hebrew, uh, is the, the word commandments is, is not necessarily the correct interpretation of that. Now, I get why we come up with that word. There is another word that is used a lot and is uh, translated in English Bibles as command or commands or commandments. Um, but it's not this word in the phrase, uh, the Ten Commandments, which can be found in uh, several places uh, in, in the Old Testament. Um, but the, the Hebrew word is debah, and it's Hebrew number 1697 in Strong's Concordance, by the way. Uh, and it's summed up in a Hebrew lexicon as this the sum of that which is spoken. But it's translated, Joel, over, it appears, and this, this is kind of interesting to me, that Hebrew word that we translate commandments in the Ten Commandments, it's in the Old Testament. That Hebrew word is in the Old Testament over 1,400 times. And get this, out of those 1,400 times, it's translated into about uh, over, over 100 different words in our English Bibles. Hmm. But the mm -hmm. vast majority of those is word or words. Um, and so I just wanted to, to point that out because, uh, you know, language is not a perfect science. It, it's, it's complicated. You know, I know there are people out there who think they're in a relationship with their Bible. So if you're on social media and your uh, relationship status is the Bible, <laughs> <laughs> you, you might have another <laughs> phrase under that that says it's complicated. <laughs> And that's true. The Bible is complicated. Language is complicated. Language experts will often offer a variety of different perspectives on what the language could mean or what they think it might mean. And, and there, there can be a whole host of different things just on one little uh, phrase or, or word even uh, on occasion. It's very interesting. Um, so we have the 10 words uh, not the Ten Commandments. In fact, I stumbled onto a Jewish Hebrew website. I don't recall, Joel, but it, it may not have been a Christian one. Uh, but they mention this. They, they say, what about the so-called Ten Commandments? The words that the Creator personally wrote on the two stone tablets that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai. In the Torah, they say, these words are never referred to as the Ten Commandments. And they kind of sum it up this way. They go through a bunch of stuff and, and use a bunch of Hebrew things that you don't want me to try to pronounce. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. um, they say this, they sum it up this way. Uh, this word, this Hebrew root, uh, means word, speak, or thing. Thus, the phrase is accurately translated as the ten sayings, the ten statements, the ten declarations, the ten words, or even the ten things but not as the Ten Commandments. Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out there, a word to the wise, um, just to lay a little foundation as we eventually start talking a little bit about what James was saying in his epistle. I know you won't be able to hear this, but here's that word. Davar. There, it was um, <laughs> pronounced. There. I know you can't hear it, but you can hear it when we, when you play this back. Um, the, what was that again? Davar. 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 Davar, yeah. Um, <laughs> Something so like that. I played it off a website. Um, Studylight.org has pronunciation, has the phonetics, the pronunciation of the words. <laughs> well, and it's interesting. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that 1697, that that Hebrew word, yeah. it, it, it's a noun, as I mentioned, uh, but it comes from a verb, which means something similar um, to speak, speak, speaking, spoke, spoken. 
uh, and then we get the the word thing uh, coming from that. And I just wanted to mention it because they're both spelled the same, but they're I think they're pronounced differently. Yeah, and 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 the interesting thing it's like you say it's pronounced it's it's translated as word, it's translated as records, it's translated as thing, it's translated uh, later as um, I have promised. Uh, listen to what I say. So it is translated a lot of different ways. And it's it, what's interesting is that when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, it says in Exodus thirty four twenty eight, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. In English, it says the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Well, both those words, words and commandments, are that same Hebrew, are the same Hebrew word. Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah, so that's just interesting there. So what we're what we're wanting to do with all this is, like you had said, James had said, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And we're wanting to get down to what James was talking about. I, I think that as grace people and as people who who are not in relationship with our Bible, but who do, <laughs> like you say, <laughs> people just think that the, the Bible um, is their Savior. You know, and it's Jesus Christ is the Savior, of course. But um, if you do take seriously the, the words of the Bible, you want to know what the Bible is really saying. But I think as grace people, we want everything to, we want to find grace in everything, even when it's not there. And um, that's possibly the case here with James. And so when he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, uh, we want to, what is, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves? What does he mean by that word, word? And the thing is, there is a lot of context here. There's a lot of what James says um, that took, Truthfully speaking, and we'll get into it, is it's not grace based, and it really is, um, as we'll see here, law based. And so we're gonna look, we're gonna look into that. You know, what does this word word mean? What did James mean when he said it? And I think it's given some background on the word word and on the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words, and and everything that James is saying here. Given a little background. I don't think it hurts. We're gonna we're sharing a, a perspective here, as we always do. It's we're sharing a perspective that you can do with it what you want. Like uh, two or three years ago, when we did our series on Paul and James, um, you're free to do with it what you want. We're sharing our perspective on what we see, and if you see something different than what we see, that's okay. Uh, but we'd like to share a perspective and. Hopefully this this will be edifying for anybody who listens, uh, whether whether you agree with this or not. But I think it's I think it is good to really get into what James and look at what he means when he says be doers of the word. You said there was some context, and and yes, look, we're we're not offended if you don't agree with us. So <laughs> I just let's let's just put that over there on the shelf. Um, you said there was a context. And and I should mention, uh, too, that you, you use the word edify. I mean, that's really what we're here to try to help people do and, and come to a greater knowledge of the truth. And sometimes we see things differently and that's OK. Don't don't get your feathers all ruffled about it. And we won't either. Right. We can we can we can go on from here. Um, let's just look at a few verses before verse 22 that I had read earlier. Uh, James uh, James 1 19. Uh, this, you know, my beloved brethren, uh, everyone must be quick to hear slow to speak and slow to anger. Now, verse 20, for the anger of man or the wrath of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Think about that. The wrath of man does not, now that's the new American standard. Most translations say produce. So let's go with that. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of of God. So let's, let's just real quick look at that word produce. What does it mean? How is it defined? Well, in, the, in Strong's, it's defined as to search or examine. But as a Thayer's Greek lexicon points out, it's also used in the context of work, trade, perform, do, practice, commit, acquire by labor. Uh, and they sum it up this way. Number one, he that does works conform to the law the predominant idea of working for pay, and finally, to work for or earn by working to acquire. Uh, that's all wrapped up in this word produce. The 
wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So if you're a, a person to whom James is writing, one of the people from the 12 tribes of, of Israel back at that time, I don't know about you, Joel, but the first thing that might be going through my mind is if anger does not produce the righteousness of God, then what does? <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that, that should be the natural reaction that would go through somebody's mind. What does if that doesn't? And this is going to start coming down to is righteousness, right standing with God, justification, salvation, this beautiful package that Christ brought to us. Is it brought to us as a gift by grace through faith, apart from works, apart from law, or is it acquired or produced through what people do? Um, I think that's a big question. Um, verse 21, the next verse. Therefore, uh-oh. Yeah. Therefore. Therefore. <laughs> In light of what I just said. Yes. I think he's about to give us an answer here on where he's coming from. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. The implanted word. Um, you can start getting into to that one too, Joel. Uh, the implanted word, uh, I think, engrafted in the King James. And just a side note, it's the only place that word appears in the Greek in the Bible is right here in James. Thayer's Greek lexicon says it this way. The word implanted from the Greek is this, implanted by others' instruction. Thus, James in 121 is saying, the doctrine implanted by your teachers, sort of like receiving it into your soil. But again, it's coming back to what did James mean by the word word? And he's about to get back into that because that that was verse uh, 21. And then we're going to get back in, into 22. But there's a, there's a theme developing here, especially when you look into the meanings of the words being used and how they really revolve around what people do. And it's going to get even more intense, I think, along those lines, because James is going to double down on some of it. Right. And as we wrap up and we'll pick up on this next week, you know, so contrasting the the anger of man or the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Well, what did Paul say about the righteousness of God? Of course, like you had just said, it's salvation, you know, grace through faith. It's when a person believes they become the righteousness of God. That's how the righteousness of God is produced. It's it's by his own work, not anything that we do. And so when when James says that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God, therefore do this. <laughs> you know, uh you know, the righteousness of God isn't produced by anger. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant so, you know, what does produce the righteousness of God? Putting away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. And so I think as grace people, we think, oh, he's making a transition here to uh, what Paul said, you know, that the grace through faith, it's, you know, being saved by grace alone, through faith alone and, and not of works. Uh, that's the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Well, again, there's more context here. That's actually not what James himself goes on to say. So, again, uh, uh, put up with us, if you will, uh, and maybe you'll enjoy what we're saying here as we share a perspective here in the weeks to come here on the Growing in Grace podcast as we look more into what James is saying here. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.